Hello procrastinators, it's Valentine's Day, which, if you've only just realised, means that you're either alone or absolutely fucked. Anyway, as I'm currently in a submarine searching for that contact lens that I lost in the ocean, I've had to pre-record this video, so I've decided today to answer a question. Can a game ever truly be bug free? And if not, where is the line of acceptability? Additionally, why are game reviewers so shit? This series of questions came to my mind when I was reading Factorio's blog post for its release of version 1.1. In it, they said the following. So I'm pretty thrilled to finally get to the point where we actually have zero known issues and zero active bug reports on the forums. Holy shit, zero bugs. Factorio is bug free, apart from of course the ones that come pelting at your heavily defended walls every 10 minutes and that big spider prick you can be if you're better at the game than I am. But not a single part of Factorio currently causes unintended behaviour. A. This attention to detail is why Factorio is one of the best games ever made. And B. Is that true? Is it bug free? I mean it's a complicated game. Surely something is wrong in there. Right? When I was a kid, back when the world was in 4-3, games were flawless. Totally flawless. Super Mario ran, jumped and fell down holes. Sonic span across levels that were way better than Mario's. And a little rectangle in my pocket housed 151 monsters. These games were flawless. Simpler, yes, but flawless. Well, okay, Mario can glitch through walls and nowadays they can be, you know reprogrammed into other games due to some exploits and I did actually find a bug in Sonic 3 that gave you infinite lives right at the start launch base zone and well missing no that was a can of worms okay let's go simpler uh books books are just programming without a semicolon so they're basically the same thing uh okay so yes fuck your video game ship with a couple of small errors and <clears throat> one big one that I I have no idea how we missed it, but I'm talking big chunky publishers with multi-million pound contracts on the line you know, Harry Potter, Harry Potter, how far into Harry Potter do you have to read before you find a mistake? Did you say book three, chapter seven, page 112? Why, you fucking donut? It's book one, chapter one, paragraph four. Hatsune Miko only got 273 words into Potter before she fucked it up. It was a dull, grey Tuesday. No, it wasn't. This scene takes place on November 1st, 1981. That was a Sunday, you dickhead. Sure, so then, films, hundreds of millions of dollars, thousands of people pouring over the tiniest fucking detail. And still, Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet has clipping issues and Gamora is fucking see through. Fine, okay, mistakes will happen, bugs will occur, that's a guarantee. You could make a game where all you do is press A to win and some prick will have a conflict with his antivirus. So, with that established, What's the point where bugs become a problem? Where's the line? Where's the refund line? The point where you just give up on a game. Now, you don't hit that line just because something odd has happened. If an NPC takes a drink, but their glass is a little out of sync with their movements, that's all right. I mean, it's noticeable, but it doesn't make me throw my PC out of the window in a huff. But if every character has that issue, have we crossed the line? I mean, it'll definitely start damaging the experience and your head might knock a point off or two, but we're not refunding yet. Well, how about if you're forced to restart a level? Or a key item doesn't spawn? What if something corrupts a save file? How many times do these things need to happen before you stop playing these days? At this point, it's a good idea to talk about the obvious elephant clipping through the walls of the room. It's your friend and mine, Cyberpunk 2077, a game that EA described as a beautiful cityscape with a staggering amount of choice and a few too many bugs. One, you're right about the cityscape. Two, there were choices in this game I decided with whoever had the nicest ass. And three, a few too many bugs? I couldn't walk down the fucking road without seeing 10 million of the same NPC watching a car drive through a fucking wall and more texture pop in than hanging out with a jack in a box who recently got into carpet sample books. Have a guess what scored the literally unplayable PlayStation 4 version of Cyberpunk has on Metacritic. No, guess. Come on, guess. The PS4 version. The one that, at its very best, has frame rates in the low 20s. A game that has loading times that even Peter Capaldi's Doctor would give up on. A game that I think we can all agree is an absolute fucking turd. 
56 out of 100. 56. Cyberpunk 2077 on PS4 is a disaster that should have never ever occurred. The developers have butchered the technical condition of this game and the only positive thing about the PS4 version is that you can, with a bit of luck and patience, eventually finish it. 3 out of 10! 3! Three, the reviewer came one fucking thin ass ass short of blaming the game for murdering his entire family, and yet he still thinks it's worth a fucking three. The only positive is that technically, if you're lucky, you can get to the end of a relatively short game. Three points. If this prick was the Taskmaster, Joe Wilkinson would have fucking won. So I think we have our answer now. The line doesn't exist. Fanboys, professionals do in inverted commas, I hope you can hear them, and other assorted dipshits will defend anything. Just take a look at the last four years of America, or the last 30 years of Britain. The more of them that defend a broken game, that buy a broken game, the more broken games become. Cyberpunk should have been obliterated by reviewers, but it wasn't. A few too many bugs only knocked a single point off of IGN score. Bam, wang it on the cover, 9 out of 10, job done. Six patches in and you still die if you run down anything steeper than a perfectly leveled floor. AAA games are only gonna get worse. Except for possibly Nintendo games because they polish that shit like they need to use it as a makeshift curling stone. <sighs> Bit of a downer ending that. But hey, you know, we still got Factorio. Actually, I wonder what IGN gave that. Oh, an eight. <laughs> <sighs>